Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I am going live today because I just did a live webinar and it was such a good moment to connect to people on this webinar, business owners specifically, to talk about how to become more efficient and create more margin in their businesses. And I felt like there's a lot of people on YouTube who are subscribers, who follow me, um, just because they enjoy talking about business, who would also be interested in attending that webinar, but they didn't because they didn't know about it. I didn't do enough promotion on YouTube. So I'm here today to actually present to you that webinar that I just completed. And what I wanna talk about is how to get 80% more results in your business with 20% effort. And another title could be um, how burnout means you need to apply the Pareto principle. So if you own a business and, or even you work in a business, is actually this concept applies to anyone who is breathing and you ever feel burnt out, tired, exhausted, confused about how to use your energy and where to put your efforts. It's a normal outcome that we all have from just being busy. And the question when you're busy is you're putting out fires, you're running yourself ragged. It gets so hard sometimes to get really clear on what is the most important thing you should be making as a priority every day or every week or every month to be able to create the results that you want. So th those results could include things for your business, for example, like revenue, profit, the quality or the number of customers that you have, the amount of profit that you take from different products. Um, it could be the leads that you have. It could be how happy you are with the free time that you're generating from your business. Those are all outcomes that you want to create. And if you feel like you're running on a treadmill and you haven't been able to create those things, then this webinar is going to talk about Pareto's principle, which can help you unlock, hey, like, why are you creating these results in your business and in your life? And what can you do to really focus on this coming year so that you actually change those outcomes get more from your business that you of what you actually want. And so um, one of the things I want to share is that, you know, when it comes to small business, only about 35% of people who start businesses end up surviving. They're keeping their business intact for 10 years, after 10 years, which means that most people actually quit. And what that means is that out of all the people who start, not everyone ends up doing the right thing that ends up generating the profit that they want. So to survive, it's really a great idea to come back to core principles and strategies to make sure that you're one of those business owners who actually makes it to the 15 year mark, continues to run their business. So that's survival, why it's important to understand the Pareto principles as it relates to your business, but also when it comes to thriving, you know, living a more quality life. Most entrepreneurs, so I would say, um, the numbers are actually like 79% end up working 50 hours a week or more in their business. So 60, 80 hours. Imagine how many people who are actually still surviving in their business are actually thriving. Most people are kind of exhausted. So it's only the top 20% of people who are able to work 40 hours or less. So there is a thriving issue here where we as business owners want to be like those people who are able to truly thrive and survive in their business. And so in order to be able to address that, what I want to talk about is the fact that like where your attention goes, your energy flows. This is something Tony Robbins always says, and it's, it's just true. Even when you're driving, no matter if you're driving and you start looking off to the right or to the left, your car follows where your eyesight goes. And that's true of all of our efforts. If you start noticing something and focusing on it, your energy ends up going there. The more energy that you put into it, the more that that thing is going to grow. So we want to actually be super clear in our business. We're leaders. We are people who are leading the profit, the sales, the product development, the employees in our company. We want to be sure that our efforts are actually going to be do invested into the right category so that we can enjoy our business. So first I want to define what the Pareto principle is. Then I'm going to um, ask you to define your goals. So if you're watching it right now, I've got one person right now who's watching, please feel free to type into the chat what your current goals are for 2021. It could be applicable to your business. It could be applicable to your life. And we're going to talk about how to really define a good strategy to make sure that you create those results, the goals that you want. So if you're watching, please type into the chat what your goals are. So, um, Okay, so the reason why I want to share this with you is because when I ran 
when I started my business, I didn't have any revenue. And the first thing that I did was I tried to get as many clients as possible, right? I would go and put myself out there. And I also, I would go everywhere looking for clients. And I would also offer them all different types of ways that they could work with me. I started a product development company. Product development meaning I would help anybody manufacture and design anything. And it was great to do that in the beginning, the shotgun approach, because I didn't know what kind of a business I wanted. I didn't know where to find my target customer. I didn't know what would create the most revenue. But after a year of doing that, I was able to go from zero to 25, $250,000 in revenue. And I realized that out of all of those offers, all of those customers, that packaging design was the most, was the main area that was generating interest towards me and my business and creating the most profit. So after that first year, what I did is I cut off doing product development and I started focusing on packaging design. And when I did that, what happened was, is I was able to have more energy and I was able to create more uh, expertise in the industry of packaging. And so I was able to go from 250,000 to $600,000 in revenue just by making that type of change and really focusing. And part of the reason was by focusing my energy there, I developed expertise and word of mouth. It was very easy for people to describe what I did. And I could focus on people who only needed packaging and address my ads and my energy and sales towards those types of people. So then after that, what I realized, so I first refined my offer. And then I realized that I was posting on social media and I was posting on LinkedIn, Instagram. I was trying to write blog articles. I was going to trade shows. I was paying money to, to display at those trade shows. I was doing so much work to try to get customers. And after that first, that second year, I realized, hey, all of my customers are coming, most of my customers are coming from one type of activity, which is trade shows, public speaking at trade shows. And that was significant because the trade shows is where people interested in buying packaging were going to think about packaging. And by stopping <laughs> traveling all over the world, going to every single trade show in person, uh, to do vendors, like to have it a booth, which was very expensive. The travel and the time was very expensive to me. And instead of doing Instagram posts where I got zero leads, zero qualified paying leads, I stopped advertising on Instagram and I only focused my efforts on selling at these trade shows by giving live presentations, a very affordable, lower time consuming event. And what happened is I went from 600,000 in revenue to 950, 950,000 in revenue that third year by focusing my energy in that one quadrant. And the result of that was that I ended up having um, developing so much authority in that space that now I get regular leads once to twice a day of people who are actually interested in working with me. And I don't have to do the same amount of work because I'm, I've literally figured out where my cut, my target customer is. And that can be true for you in your business, because imagine if you are able to get more clients more effectively with less effort, you are able to generate more revenue, more profit. And, and more margin in terms of your actual time, you know, your ability to go home at night rather than, um, you know, working for hours and hours on end, you're actually able to enjoy more for, of your business. So how does this apply to, or like, how does this apply to you? This concept that one action or narrowing the focus into one action out of many will create the majority of your results is actually captured in this concept called Pareto's principle, also known as the 80-20 rule. And the 80-20 rule loosely says that approximately 20% of your activities or actions or inputs will create 80% of your results or outcomes. And the number 80-20 is just something that you memorize is easy numerically to memorize because the actual number is going to be different for every single person's business and every single action that you take. But the key part to realize is that it's saying that a minority of your actions, if you did 10 things, only two of them really are the ones that create the results. So if you apply this to your business and your goals, if you decide to focus on the thing that will leverage your business the most, you're going to create better results every year. So what do you want in your business? And I've got a list of seven different things. 
So you should ask yourself, where am I on a scale from one to 10 in terms of satisfaction with your business in these categories? Number one, sales. From one to 10, how satisfied are you? If you're a 10, I'd love to see it in the chat. And if you're obviously, if you're a 10, then this is not an area that you need to work on. If you're a one, you totally need to work on this area. And we're going to create a goal to work on that area using Pareto's principle. So sales, your clients, the number or the quality of the clients that you have. Do they respect you, appreciate you? Are they great to work with? Number three, leads. Do you have enough leads? Number four, profit. Number five, time, free time for yourself. Number six, joy. And number seven, energy. So you want your business to create all of these things for you, obviously. And I'm going to put this in the chat here so you can um, see that, see it in case you wanted to actually read it. But so my question to you is if your business, like where is the main pain point out of these areas? Where do you want to actually increase more margin for yourself? And it's going to depend upon where you are in your business. So you want to write a sentence that says, I want more fill in one of those seven things. And the more specific you can be, the better. So if you want to say, I don't just want sales, I want to go from 250 to 1 million, then you, I want more sales. I want to go from 250 to 1 million. Write that down because the more you write it down, the better and more clear your strategy moving forward is going to be. And um, yeah. And so then the next question you need to ask yourself is what is the, what are the different inputs that create this outcome? So for example, if it's sales, if it's revenue, there is sales activities that you are taking on a daily basis. So that could be posting on Instagram or social, you know, Instagram, posting on LinkedIn, going to trade shows, writing blogs, sending e-newsletters. So write out all of the 10 activities and it could be more than that, as many as you want. And in the case of, for example, customers, you may not know off the top of your head, but most entrepreneurs will. Most small business owners will know who all of their customers are, but you could also go to QuickBooks and pull a quick report out of all of the, you know, 2020 or 2019, out of all the customers that you had, pull the total revenue for the end of the year and sort it by total revenue and take the top 20 to 25% of your customers and highlight them. And then let's analyze that. Where are you getting your results? Where are you getting your results? That right there should be printed and circled and analyzed and put onto a post-it note on your computer so that you can stare at it on a daily basis because that is the key to creating more margin in that area that you were just analyzing. So again, I was focusing on sales because that's a really exciting, compelling thing for most entrepreneurs to create more profit or more sales. But if you were to focus on people who are similar to the top 20%, if you were to eliminate servicing the bottom 80% of your customers, so maybe send them an email and invite them to join the the top 20% and and give you more business. But then after that, let go of them and stop focusing on them. What would happen is you keep the top 80% of your profit, but work less. Work less for more profit. Do you see how that would work? Do you see that would work for your benefit? And here are some other examples of ways that this really applies to you. So revenue. So 20% of your customers will produce 80% of your revenue. 20% of the products that you sell will create 80% of the profit that you have. 20% of your employees will produce 80% of the productivity in your business. So what if you believe that and actually built your business and strategy around that? You're going to have more sales, more profit, and more productivity. So that's Pareto's principle applied to things that you want more of. We could also apply Pareto's principle to things you want less of. Okay, so what are those things? For example, maybe you feel like you are um, very inefficient or you have losses in manufacturing, your costs are too high, or you've got a lot of HR problems. So 20% of your manufacturing systems will produce 80% of your problems in throughput. So if you want to increase your throughput, the number of units you manufacture in an hour, there there is a process, there's 20% of the processes that you could improve and focus on and actually increase your productivity by 80%. 20% of your products 
will create 80% of the losses in your total revenue. So if you stop selling the bottom 20% of your products, you will have 80% less losses. 20% of your employees are causing 80% of your HR problems. So imagine if you gave that those top bottom or those bottom performing employees a warning and then actually let them go, um, you would actually end up having better performance and less drama in your business. So if you are watching this and you are interested in in applying this yourself, please enter into the chat what your goals are right now. What area do you want to work on in your business to create better results? So that could be some, what do you want more of in your business? Or it could be something that you want less of. And then what I'd like to know is, hey, what are the key inputs that are creating this outcome? And then what do you need to do about it? The vic to the victor goes the prize. To the person who is actually going to take hold of this information, you're going to create real results. And here are the consequences, okay? So the reason why I'm doing this webinar and the reason why I'm talking about this concept is because I do consulting, business growth consulting. And there are two camps of customers who I work with or clients, business owners that I work with. The ones who work on a problem with me and create results and the people who work on a problem with me who don't create results. And it boggles my mind. I keep thinking through how do I help those people who are not creating results? And I realized that the, the main thing is that those people are forever confused and forever tired. And the reason why is because they constantly have everything being a priority. They're not willing to stay focused on really fixing some of the core problems in their business. They let the urgency of everything that's going on distract them from being focused. And I am the same way. So I do not judge you. We as humans are very easily distracted by shiny objects or things that seem like the biggest, loudest problem, but it can't all be a priority. It can't. And the people who let everything be a priority don't make the kind of progress that is equal to the, the people who really focus in on one objective and really take this bull by the horns and focus on the key thing that's going to create the most leverage for them. And for the doubters, you know, for anybody else who hears this and says, I don't know if that's true, why don't more people do it? And the thing I would tell you is that the people who create great results are able to do that. They discipline their mind and stay focused on those things. And the people who don't, the reason why is because they forget. That's the first reason. They get too busy and distracted with busyness in life, which is completely reasonable. I do the same thing. We all want to put out fires, but that's a problem. And so if you have, if you believe me when I say Pareto's principle can help you, but you find that you forget due to urgency, you need to create a support system. So find friends who can create accountability with you, um, hire someone like an employee to help you stay on track with these things. Find a mentor, mastermind, create a friendship group where people are going to hold each other accountable to support each other and staying focused on the most important thing. So you are welcome and invited to, um, hi Rekesh, feel free to like leave in the comment in about what your goal for your business is. That's what we're talking about is how to get uh, more from your business. But the second reason why people don't apply Pareto's principle is that they don't believe that, um, they're afraid. They're, they don't believe that the Pareto's principle could actually help them, which is to focus on the top 20% of the clients that you have to be able to create more revenue. And so they, you think it's too easy or they're afraid. And so people don't actually take the time to apply Pareto's principle to their goal and objective in growing their business. But I don't think anyone watching this today is in that camp, okay? I believe in you. I believe that you're here watching this because you actually want to create change in your business. So let's do that. Let's talk about your business. What are your goals? And that could be something that you want. I want more revenue in my business, or it could be something you don't want. I want less operational costs. I want less drama amongst employees. I want to work less. So if you could take this time to really apply this, write it out on a piece of paper or enter it into the chat here. What do you want from your business? What do you want more of? And then the second piece is for you to identify what is the key thing that's creating that result. So if you want more revenue, who are the top 20% of your customers who are creating revenue and who are hiring you? If you want more profit, what are the top 20% of the products that are creating profit for you? 
If you want more productivity, who are the top 20% employees creating 80% of the productivity for you? And if you identify that, that's your first step. Congratulations. You've identified the problem. You have clarity. The second step is implementation. And implementation is a little bit more difficult. Rekish, would love to hear more about your juice business. Um, Want to hear about your goals for 2021 and what you're going to accomplish in it. Uh, you feel free to enter it into the chat. Um, so if you have a goal and you want to be able to create these results, you need to actually schedule time to make this a priority. This top 20% that you've just written down, you need to focus on fixing it. Fixing it as the main thing that you're focusing on. And that probably means eliminating some of the bottom 80% performers. With that extra time, with those extra resources, you're going to be able to create the energy and the focus on the top 20% so that you can actually ensure that your goal will be created. So um, if you want to talk more about this concept, let's just pretend you're like, hey, Emily, cool. I like, I hear what you're saying. I want to work on it more. I have an article on my blog. So I'm going to type this in here. Part two sold. That's my blog. There's an article there called Pareto's Principle. And let's just go there right now. Um, so you can read more about it if you want to actually continue to think about your goals. Or you can actually schedule a 30-minute consult and we can actually write out your goals. And I'd be happy to um, help you get clear on what kind of things you think you could be doing to help your business grow. But the main takeaway I want you to have from this is that Creating a business that's successful is not um, an easy task, but it's a simple task. It's simple from the standpoint of focusing on the most important things. And every year that you do your business, you're going to get better and better and better. But the way that you do that is by focusing on the top 20% of the efforts that are creating the results that you want. And that is the application of Pareto's principle to your business to help you grow. I hope that you enjoyed this. Again, I will put into the chat a link to the, my blog to be able to read more about it. If you have a business and you've got goals, I'd love to hear what they are. I'd also love to hear how you are creating results for yourself. Um, I'm hoping that you have a successful year this year. There we go. Um, I wish you guys all the best of luck. This is my 30 minute hop on to be able to share this live webinar that I just gave. I've got another phone call um, consult coming up at 145. So I'm going to leave. But please do share with me in the future about your goals and how you've been able to apply Pareto's principle to create results. Thanks for joining me. I wish you the best.